Hey, what's up, Mrs. Skull Mystic? Today I am coming to you from the lovely and wondrous Arcanum to bring you the new edition of Through the Grapevine, where we bring up news, tips, tricks, ideas, and all sorts of things involved with Wizard to make our game more fun and to debunk some of these trolls where we can and to share in general. Yes, does that all sound good? I, I hope so, because I really lost my train of thought about what to say there, and I tried to fake it, so I, I hope that worked out. I'm going to run around here and actually know what I'm talking about now, if you guys don't mind. I, I'll, I really will do that this time. Okay, let's get on with Through the Grapevine before I lose my mind the rest of the way. One of the ideas I've had since the last Through the Grapevine was mount mixing. How about... Well, we already mixed pets, and they already have stats and what like that, but they're, they're starting to bring stats on to mounts now. How about if we could mix our pets and come up with an entirely new... I'm not mix our pets. Mix our mounts and come up with an entirely new heretofore unseen mount. Would that not be cool? I think that that would be amazing. Let's say we mix a dinosaur and a horse, and we get a horsesaur. A horse sword. <laughs> a horse sword. <laughs> I, I'm just, I, I get these mental pictures sometimes, and it just, yeah, it doesn't work out well. Yeah, but I think that would be something that would be really cool. If we could mix mounts and get things that we have never seen before. Now, King's Isle, I know this means applying some imagination to your programming. So, get to it. Let's get on it now. Is this a possible thing to do? If we can mix pets, we should be able to mix mounts. I would really, really like to see some of the cool combinations that could come out of some of the ideas that you guys have for mixing your mounts. Let me see. Next on the list, this idea comes from Chris. And Chris, I don't know why I didn't address this before. I, I must be out my... I must just be plain plum dumb. <laughs> How about, King's Isle, if we can finally, at last, transmute brass and steel from lesser materials? We can transmute stuff from everything else, you know, I mean, diamonds and all, and all that whatnot, diamonds and black pearls and everything else. Let's transmute some metals. These metals are hard enough to get by, to come by, to get by, to come by as it is. How about if we can just like get 15 or so of something else and make a steel? That, uh, that, I know a bunch of you are going to be clapping right now for that idea. That, that's got to be a, the top idea I've had all week, well, I've had, that I've had come into me all week. Transmuting metals. Let's get on that. Oh, I'm sorry. I got distracted by the sky that I'm walking over. <laughs> anyway, on to the next idea. Let me see. Oh, ba -dee -ba -dee -ba -dee -ba. What can I do here? Oh, this one is one that I was thinking of the other day because I really don't have much use for square jewels. How about if we were allowed not necessarily to change every jewel slot on a pet, but how about if we were allowed to change, to, you know, get an elixir or something like that to change one jewel slot? I don't have much use for square jewels. You've got stun block, and that's really, as far as I'm concerned, that's really the only thing that, that's any good as far as the square jewels go, stun block. Uh, really, I don't, yeah, I don't like the square jewels much at all. I would love to change all my square jewel slots to pierce or something different. And I think that's a great idea to have. And I don't see why we can't have that one. It's, it's a small thing, you know, small change. I don't really think that at this point <laughs> it's going to foul up PvP any more than it already is. Because, well, let's, let's face it, it's about as broken as a freaking China vase thrown from a 10-story window. It really is. Let's have that. If we could have that, it would be awesome. Uh, but let me think here. Um, okay. This one, I am going to tell you all right now, Apocalyptic Penguin. This is your idea. Now, I'm sure that some of you have already figured this one out. And if you have, just in case, I'm going to voice it now. Guys, if you are doing the Sky Anchor part of Polaris, you can walk past those bosses to get to Minak. If you're farming for your little elephant, mammoth, mount, whatever he is, you can walk past those bosses. You do not have to fool with them. You're perfectly allowed Unless, of course, you're Mason Scrub, by the way, Mason. <laughs> you're perfectly allowed to walk by those bosses. Unless you're Mason, then you have to fight them every time because you get pulled. Because you're like, I don't know what you're doing, but you're Mason, you get pulled. <laughs> hey, Mason, what's up? <laughs> anyway, on to the next idea. 
Let me think here. Ah, but Oh, you know what? This is one I was thinking about the other day, too. In hatching pets, we always take two parents and get one baby. Okay, that's cool. How about if we could get twins or triplets, something like that, if we have, if, just as a rare spawn thing, not, not every time, but like as a special rare spawn thing, if you could get a really cool set of twins or triplets or something like that, you know, maybe you want to put one of those pets on an alt. Maybe uh, something, you know, I, I can't think of what occurrence you would use it for besides that, but I think that having twins or triplets just as an extra pet, like kind of like a, kind of like a little boost, a little bonus, a little buff for pet mixing. How about if we could get twins or triplets on our pet hatches? Maybe your first twin fails in his stats, you know, and he, but he looks the same as another one, and your other one doesn't. You know, have, have two chances on that hatch instead of one, or three chances on that hatch instead of one. I think that twins and triplets would be a great idea to add to the game, just as a rare spawn treat kind of thing. Okay, Caroline. Um, Caroline... I'm going to give you credit for this one, but I think that Patty Hamilton has the idea too, or talked to me about the idea too. With the seed vaults and all these seed events and bonus seed events that we have, I know that everybody's got about 16 tons of couch potatoes and magma peas stacked up. How about if all those extra seed vaults we have, we could label what they are so we don't get them fouled up because they look the same. If you put them on the ground, they look the same. You have to actually pull all of them out of your storage to look at them to see what's in them. How about if we could label those seed vaults like we do our gear, like we do our gear sets? I think that that's a wonderful and very simple idea to implement. I'm sure a lot of you would love to be able to know what the heck is in that seed vault before you have to pull it out, look through it, put it back, pull it out, look through it, put it back. I just, just like a lot of other things, that can get tedious. I understand that. That's totally true. Alrighty, Alicia Jones, my favorite, favorite contributor. Alicia, this is you, because, well, you always come up with good ideas. I haven't seen you have a bad idea yet. Alicia says we should be able to move house banks, like whenever we're doing glitch work or decorating work or what have you. Not necessarily, not necessarily pick up the bank and get rid of it, because, well, that would make any sense. But being able to move the house bank from where it is, because sometimes in some of these houses, it's in a really inconvenient spot. I, I think so, too. So I think that being able to move our house banks, again, a simple idea that would improve our gameplay a little bit. It's not that it would be a, a hugely used idea, but just another one of those little tweaks and twerks that twerks <laughs> that would make our game, gameplay just a little bit better. I think, let's see, I'm going to do peep, peep, dee. How about a tip? Yeah, let's, let's finish this video up with a tip this time. This is one of my own because Waffles was asking me about it the other day or talking to me about it the other day, and it occurred to me to tell him, but it also occurred to me that I haven't told anybody else. If you are glitch stacking your gardens, a lot of times, especially when you have a ton, ton of seeds in your house that you're, that you're growing, a lot of times your gardening spells, your tending spells, will want to trip out on you. It will glitch out. It will make you quit the game or log off or whatever to actually work again. I have this a lot, for some reason, on my balance character where I don't have it on others. I have it a lot on my balance and sometimes on my death. Guys, here's your game tip for this video. This is what you do with that. And now, mind you, it works for me and it has worked for me every time. It may not work for you because, well, let's face it, our game is a funny thing. And it has some funny, funny, and by funny, I mean dang annoying, <laughs> glitches to it. What you need to do is when you tend your plants, we tend all your patches of plants, use your pest spell first. For some reason, that one, for me, does not glitch. And then I can go ahead and put on my other, you know, my water, my bu uh, music, my bugs, whatever they may be, and it doesn't glitch. If I start with the bug, or if I start with the water, or I start with the music, or I start with any of the other stuff, pollination, I'll get that glitchy thing where it's going to go bzz, 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 and it's like stuck. And I have to log out or sign out to get it to fix. Let's try that. See if it works for you. It has worked for me in the past. Use your pest treatment spell first, and then your water and your music and whatever else. All right? All right. I do believe that's going to be quite good for this video. I've covered quite a few things I wanted to talk about, and I will... if there's anything else or anything more or any guys have any more ideas feel free to share them in the comments that'd be great and we'll have another through the grapevine all right guys if you enjoyed this video please 
hammer down the like button and then lit up lightly and then hammer it down again just to be sure. <laughs> I'm sure that will get it every time. As well, share this video, guys. I could use the help. If you get the word out there, I can make more and more and more of these videos. Until next time, this is Skelly Mystic reminding you that whatever else you do, always love the game. Peace! Hey, what's up, gamers? This is Skelly Mystic. Welcome back to Pet Training Baby Tomega. This time, I am going to be doing this cute little critter right here, Ivaninko's Tiger. This is the Storm version of the Emberstone Tiger that's already out, and amazingly enough, is dropped by, you guessed it, Colonel Ivaninko.